These amazing new Canon lenses we're about to review mean there's never been a better time to get into wildlife photography, but the best investment is always in yourself, in education. Start with my photography buying guide, which teaches you the ins and outs of all the gear you might buy, can save you thousands of dollars. Then move on to stunning digital photography, where I'll teach you all the right camera settings, as well as things like how to get close to animals and how to compose your shots and get the right lighting. You'll need some post-processing, so jump to our Lightroom Classic Training, where you'll learn to organize your photos and edit them quickly. And for the more serious heavy lifting editing, get our Photoshop Training, which will take your photos to the next level. And our technical presets mean that with just a few clicks, you can produce amazing results, pulling details out of blown out highlights and hidden shadows that make your wildlife photography next level. Now, on to our full video. This is the Nikon D850 with the 600 millimeter F4. Total cost, about $16,000, but it's the greatest wildlife kit ever. And this is the Canon EOS R with the new Canon 600 millimeter F11 lens. Look how small and light it is. I think I'm gonna blow Tony away in this little test. It's so incredibly light. I'm holding it up with one hand so you can see. One cool feature about it is it can be compact and then you have to unlock the lens, extend it, and then lock it again and then you're at 600 millimeters and you're ready to shoot. I'm a glove trotter. <laughs> it's so light. <laughs> Try to do that with yours. Don't. This is the 800 millimeter lens and it's $900. It's a bit bigger, a little bit heavier, but still very manageable to take on a hike or a walk or just track birds for a while. Tony just ran into a tree. To be honest, I wasn't really sold on the Canon R5 until I got to try these lenses. I think these lenses are gonna be the thing that get me to get the R5 body so I can have a light, less expensive wildlife lens for when we are out more casually. There's a stump. And I actually imagine this might bring a lot of people into this new system. I get so many emails and questions about affordable light wildlife lenses, and this is it. This will be my new go-to suggestion. One thing you absolutely need to know before you consider getting one of these lenses is that they're only available for Canon mirrorless cameras. That means if you're shooting anything else, a 70D, these won't fit. So you'll have to switch to Canon mirrorless if you haven't already. Yeah, your arms are looking a little tired. I mean, this rig is so heavy that, yeah, my arms get tired after, you know, 30 seconds, and it does cause me to miss shots sometimes. I do wish it were lighter. What about a monopod? They, you just can't with flying birds, because you got to, like, lift it up as they are flying over your head and stuff. I just, the only thing I found that works is hand-holding it. I could do this all day, Northrop. Oh, big point for me. Endlessly holding and tracking animals without getting tired. Tony, must I Harlem Globetrot again? To prove you wrong. Okay, so it's small and light, but mine is gonna be way, way sharper because you get what you pay for. You carry something big, you get big results. Point Tony. Wait, wait, what are the big results? Sharpness, details, megapixels, eyes. Okay, we'll see. Just look at the pictures side by side. Obviously the Nikon is way sharper. Wait, can you even tell which is the Nikon shot? Well, let's zoom in. Now it's super obvious, right? Or is it? If you're still unsure, it's the one on the right that was taken with the $16,000 Nikon. But if we put the $900 800mm F11 on the $3,900 Canon R5, the sharpness differences completely disappeared. In controlled conditions photographing this birdhouse, I can see just slightly more detail from the Nikon, so I'm giving myself a point. This lens is F4, while Chelsea's is only F11, and that does two things. 
One, it gives me more background separation, which is so important in dense foliage for making the subject separate from the background. Hold on, let's look at an example. The $16,000 F4 lens on the right creates this 3D effect with surreal subject separation created by deep background and foreground blur. So point for me. Of course, I have the option to use a higher f-stop number when I want deeper depth of field. The Canon lenses have a fixed f11 aperture. They can't be adjusted at all. And two, it gives me two extra stops of light. No, wait, uh, f4, f5, 6, f8, f11, three stops of light. It also gives me three extra stops of light, meaning I'm shooting at three stops lower of an ISO, meaning I'm getting one eighth the amount of noise. With that f11 lens, she's always shooting at a high ISO, even in bright sun. Our dog Pixel was the only animal willing to hold still while I switched between the cameras. Even without zooming in, you can see that an f4 lens gathering eight times more light produces a far cleaner image in low light. Zoom in and the differences become even more obvious. Point for me. That low light capability will produce keepers when shooting in dense forests after sunset. There just is no substitute for big glass. Okay, it's true that with a f11 lens, I'll have three less stops of light. And that means that my images probably won't look as good, as sharp, as clean as Tony's in a lower light situation. But here's the deal. Being married to Tony, I understand he doesn't always bring that huge 600 millimeter lens with us when we're walking the dogs or going on a hike because it's heavy. So you can't get a cleaner shot if your camera and your lens are not on you. This is truly light enough to bring it with you anywhere. And if you see wildlife, you'll be there with this to capture it. Another thing that I have over Tony with these is that the stabilization is really good. I think better than the D850. And that means that you won't get as much camera shake. So maybe I can use that lower shutter speed. When shooting still subjects in a dense forest, I was able to get sharp pictures at 1 20th of a second and camera shake was never a problem. So I chose my shutter speed based on only subject movement. It helps that the Canon R5 is the best low light camera we've ever tested. Look at this handheld video at 800 millimeters. Can you even believe it's handheld? Crazy good. The excellent stabilization combined with the R5's 4K slow motion video and the option to crop into the center of the frame makes this the greatest wildlife video setup we've ever tested. I never imagined I'd be able to shoot 800 millimeters one-handed. I'm unusually strong now, freakishly strong. Can we see your muscles? No, you're just gonna have to trust. They're very big and they're very strong. Also, the image quality is really good considering the price, size, and weight difference. This lens, the 600 millimeter lens is $700. Our 600 millimeter lens for the Nikon is, I think, $13,000. That's a huge difference, and you can still get really beautiful shots using this lens. Okay, but Chels, why don't you tell them why you switched to Sony, but you still use this D850 for your wildlife stuff? Okay, you got me there. It's because mirrorless cameras have a lot of lag when you're tracking wildlife. That means if I'm tracking a flying bird, the lag can sometimes make me lose the animal in the frame. And that's been something that I haven't liked with shooting wildlife with mirrorless. There is lag with these lenses and these cameras. It's workable. I just don't find it as enjoyable as shooting through an OVF. Okay, point for me and then point for DSLRs in general. like. You might not want to upgrade, but I will say for me shooting with those still animals are no problem at all. And I did okay with the moving subjects, but I still like the OVF. I think I deal with the lag with this price difference though. There's no DSLR that's small and light like those. I think the lenses will put people into the mirrorless Canon system because there's no other wildlife lenses like this. They're that good. Yeah. When I tested the R5 and R6 with our big 500 millimeter F4 lens, they had the best wildlife autofocus ever, tracking moving subjects and even finding their eye corner to corner. Unfortunately, with the 600 and the 800 millimeter F11 lenses, the autofocus points are limited to the center of the frame. The R5 and R6 still did a great job of finding the eye, but it forced me to compose the subject's dead center. The RP's focusing system is much more primitive. It can't find the eye and often got stuck on the foreground distractions, but it was still good enough to get plenty of shots and focus for both still and moving subjects. I can't easily show you the D850's optical viewfinder, but it snapped into focus faster and tracked subjects across a wider portion of the frame. 
point for me. Here's an important part of wildlife photography, being able to get really close, especially for things like small songbirds, insects. So let's check the minimum focusing distance by walking backwards until we can focus on this tree. Okay. And whoever is closer wins. Oh. I'm just gonna set this to the minimum and see when it pops in focus. Uh, okay, I'm in focus right here. I'm in focus here. Okay, you're pretty far behind One, me. I guess that's a point two, for me. Three. Four, seven, four, about 17 feet. Clearly not super scientific, but that's pretty far away. Yay, Tony. Here's the maximum magnification of all three lenses, plus the Nikon 600 with a 1.4 teleconverter, which is how we reached 800 millimeters. Even though the specs aren't that different, the big 600 millimeter produces bigger results. If you wanted to focus closer, you could put extension tubes on. Of course, then you'd have to be swapping them in and out off of your lens and camera, um, but it will allow you to focus closer. Having a high frames per second is important in wildlife because it increases your chances of getting the perfect wing position with flying birds. With the RP, we got between two and five real world frames per second. With the R5, we got between three and eight real world frames per second. The D850 with the vertical grip produced between six and 10 real world FPS, exceeding its specifications and averaging about twice the shots of the R5. <laughs> Hold on, cheater. That's with the mechanical shutter, but I got real world 18 frames per second using the electronic shutter on the mirrorless Canon R5 and R6. Even though the electronic shutter reduced the image quality, it's an important advantage for capturing fast action. So give me that point back, a blink, a thank you. Also, give me another point where having a much quieter mechanical shutter and the option of a truly silent shutter so I won't scare the animals like your noisy D850. Well, that makes us tied for points, so you'll have to decide which of these factors are important to you. My suggestion, get the gear that fits your budget and start shooting now. If you decide to upgrade later, you'll still use your lightweight Canon gear. Even Tony started carrying the R5 and 800 millimeter lens on walks and hikes, and he's getting more shots than he ever did because he doesn't want to carry that big heavy Nikon rig everywhere he goes. In the comments down below, I'd like to hear what you guys think of the new lens. Canon made something that never existed before, an autofocus F11 lens, an 800 millimeter that you could just pack and hike with. I actually think it's really, really compelling. And even though I have this, I want one of those for those times when I'm not going to carry this. Don't forget to subscribe, it's totally free. We have lots more Canon EOS R reviews and tutorials coming and give us a like. Thanks. Bye.